Uh, hey everybody, so uh, as Jan said, um, I'm Laurie Steffi. Uh, I've been working with the DESI team for about three years. Uh, and I'd just like to acknowledge, first of all, that this has been a team effort. Uh, so I'll give the first half of this talk. Um, Daniel will give the second, but also um, uh, Raul and Thomas and Stephen Bailey made significant contributions here. So um, what makes this talk different from the rest of the agenda here at GPUs for Science is that DESI is a Python code. Um, so we're going to be telling you about uh, what that means and how uh, you can make Python work on GPUs. Okay, so DESI, for anyone who's not familiar, uh, is the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument. Uh, they are, their mission is to better understand dark energy, and the best way to do that is by making a 3D map of the universe. So they'll be doing that uh, over the course of a five-year survey, which uh, officially starts next year, although they, they started taking data late uh, 2019. They are located um, at a telescope in Kitt Peak, Arizona, and they'll be scanning the sky, taking data, um, sending those data to NERSC every night for five years. Um, so as you might imagine, that's a lot of compute time, and so it's important to make that as efficient as possible, uh, not just for DESI, but for everybody else uh, running on NERSC who also wants to get their jobs to the queue. So uh, the initial charge uh, from NISAP was to try to speed their code up um, on the Knight's Landing partition for Cori, um, but also to keep their code in Python. Um, Desi, the developers are astronomers, they're not necessarily computer scientists, and they really like Python, it's readable, it's maintainable. So that was their ask to us. <coughs> okay, well, that was, that was um, easy enough, I guess, on the CPU, but it's kind of a different situation on GPUs. Uh, even getting your Python code to run on GPUs is maybe a little bit more tricky than people think. Uh, there's no import GPU that you put at the top of your Python script. And the normal libraries that a lot of us use, um, like NumPy and SciPy, just will not run out of the box on GPUs. Um, so what are your options if, if you're a Python programmer? Um, things are changing pretty quickly, so what, what I'm telling you today will probably be out of date uh, soon, and the landscape was different a year ago when we were starting this effort. Um, but at that time, Kupai uh, was kind of the best documented, most fleshed out option, so that's what we chose. Um, what is Kupai? It's basically a drop-in replacement for NumPy, so it looks very much like NumPy. Um, but instead of the back end being uh, C or C++, it's CUDA. Uh, so for you, the Python programmer, you mostly don't have to worry about that. You just continue writing your code um, with some caveats, but that, that's what we chose. But in case you're wondering, there's, there's quite a few additional options out there. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but on the left is Kupai. Uh, in the middle is Jax, which is um, a framework out of Google. Uh, Jax uses the XLA compiler to write code, so it's a little more portable. Um, there's also Numba, which I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, if you're a scikit-learn or pandas user, you might consider um, NVIDIA Rapids. So there's really no um, one answer. Okay, so if you're curious what Kupai looks like, um, I told you it was easy, but uh, don't take my word for it. <laughs> so <clears throat> it looks very much like using uh, your normal NumPy, except uh, you can import, um, I mean, you could even import NumPy uh, Kupai as NP if you wanted to. And um, yeah, you as the programmer just need to make sure that you move your arrays to and from uh, the GPU and kind of keep track of where they are. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's pretty straightforward to use. The question is, <laughs> what if you need something that Kupai has not implemented? So they've implemented a lot of the NumPy interface, but some, some more custom, uh, more niche things are not. So the answer is you need to do it yourself. Okay, fine. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could do that, but the first one, uh, or maybe not the first, but the easiest one uh, and the most Python-like one is a tool called Numba. I don't know if anybody's used Numba for CPUs. It's a very friendly way um, to JIT compile and really speed up CPU code. And it's similar for GPU, um, except that it, it you really you have to think about writing code for a GPU, which is different than uh, uh, for a CPU. So what does that mean? Um, here's just a very basic example of what it looks like to use Numba. 
Um, and this is what we have done for DESI. So in situations where they needed functions that were not in CUPI, we have written uh, kernels using Numba. So you add this decorator, this numba.cuda.jit decorator, which, which tells um, your code, hey, this is, this is GPU code. Um, we have this CUDA grid function, which basically um, is how you communicate with the GPU threads. And you'll need to double check, um, is make sure that you're not exceeding uh, your thread block size, that's what the zero between, or I between zero and 32 is doing. You can't return anything, you can't allocate any memory, you basically can't do most of the things that you would like to do um, in NumPy. So it really, it starts to look more and more like CUDA and less like Python. Um, it's still easier and more friendly than some of the other frameworks. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the option we chose uh, for DESI. Okay. So with Kupai and Numba, we were able to get their code on the GPU, but as uh, a main theme in GPU for Science Day has been, it's not enough just to get it on the GPU. Um, you want it to run well. So a lot of the things that we had done to make the DESI code fast on CPUs were really counterproductive for GPU. Um, instead of cutting uh, your, your task up into lots of small pieces, which is maybe good for a CPU, um, you want to do the opposite of that for the GPU to take care or to take advantage of the massively parallel nature of a GPU. So we we kind of saw this coming, um, and we started a major code refactor um, in 2019. So this was not trivial. We had to kind of rethink uh, how Desi was approaching the problem. And um, from here, I'll let uh, Daniel Mogala take over and tell you the rest of the story. Thanks, Lori. Uh, let me just share my screen here. Okay, so yes, so I joined the, this effort um, a couple months ago, right around um, the time that the major code refactor was wrapping up. And I, I helped a lot with implementing a lot of tests. Um, so hopefully this, this next part will give anyone who has a Python application and is looking to leverage a GPU um, some good examples of how, how they can get started in that process. So one of the first things that I just mentioned was implementing a lot of tests to make sure that as we're making these changes that the results are still correct, or at least the same as the, the CPU version was um, producing. Uh, and then the next major effort was was doing a bunch of profiling. So it's using some of the tools that were just just mentioned in earlier talks, like the Insight systems, to identify the application bottlenecks and give us some clues about where we can focus some of our efforts for optimization. Um, and as as Lori mentioned, our main strategy is to use CuPy as a drop-in replacement for for NumPy. Um, and there are some places where we also implemented um, Numba CUDA kernels as well. Um, and then I'll also mention this uh, NVIDIA multiprocess service, which allowed us to kind of explore saturating the GPU utilization um, as well. Okay, so, so yeah, so in, in CUPI, CUPI also has uh, supports the NVIDIA tools extension markers and ranges. So it's easy to add these little um, decorators throughout the code to, to um, annotate the timeline that's produced by the NVIDIA profiling tools that give us um, information about where the, the time is being spent um, while our code is running. And so there's a couple of different ways of doing this. You have these direct N NVTX range push and pop uh, functions. You can also add uh, the fancy Python decorators to functions so you don't even have to modify any part of the function body. And there's also support for the with statement context box as well. Um, so we added these to our code, and especially where um, in the intense, intensive parts of the, the, the process. So the, the main, what this code is doing is basically splitting up an entire image into thousands of, of sub images and processing each one uh, separately. Uh, this is the strategy that was employed on the, on the CPU, uh, basically to, to leverage a lot of parallels and to divide the task into lots of small bits. So on, on the GPU with these NVTX markers, we can see 
that most of the time is being spent in this function and it's making a bunch of calls to this uh, Hermitian eigenvalue decomposition function. Um, but we also noticed some, some unexpected performance issues during the profiling. So there are some gaps that uh, just intuitively we missed when we are adding these decorators because we didn't expect them to be um, performance intensive. But the, by, by looking at the profile, we saw that there's some blank spaces that we weren't catching. So that gave us some clues about some unexpected things we could speed up as well. Um, so the main lesson here was that uh, basic NumPy optimizations are still still useful. So pretty much anywhere there's a there's a for loop, there's probably an opportunity to vectorize some part of the code. Um, and so yeah, this is just one example where making a, a really small uh, change was able to 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 provide a, a noticeable speed up because this this function is being called so many times, even though uh, it's it's a pretty small change, it still makes a pretty big impact. Um, and the other the other topic is because we're running a bunch of these small functions, uh, we wanted to see if we could saturate our GPU uh, usage by using this multi-process service by NVIDIA, which is essentially uh, lets multiple processes um, use the use the GPU by overlapping um, kernel and and memcopy operations. Um, so this led us kind of just increase the number of, of processes, kind of divide up all those tasks to more um, processes that were making GPU calls and gave us better performance just by turning on um, something that was completely outside of the application. So this didn't require very much uh, code refactor, just considering the limited memory usage uh, capacity on the GPU, we just had to make sure that we weren't um, gonna be using too much memory on the GPU. Um, and then the, the next part we are trying to figure out, okay, is there, is there a way we can actually um, optimize this, these, all these calls to this Hermitian eigenvalue uh, decomposition? And so and we're able to leverage um, a, a batch eigenvalue solver in the, the CUDA CUSolver API um, to give us, um, to basically, again, remove this for loop and do all these smaller calls to this function. Um, in just one call. So there, there actually wasn't uh, a, a wrapper for this in CuPy, but it's able to, um, without too much work, look at how those CuPy wrappers wrap other calls to CuSolver and, and implement this ourselves. Um, and this also ex um, example demonstrates how we're able to write code uh, that works with both NumPy arrays and CuPy arrays, because uh, CuPy Im implements some um, some helper functions to uh, return the array module that your actual data is in. So you can write code that will work in both NumPy arrays and CuPy arrays, which helps again with the port porting the application to the GPU and being confident that the results um, are still the same. Um, yeah, and so this just kind of is a demonstration of some of the speed ups that we've been able to, to make. So by batching that, call to the eigenvalue decomposition, we were able to see about a, a 1.5x speed up um, in a variety of different run, run configurations. Um, and again, also demonstrating the, uh, set, the MPS, um, how that helps improve performance as well. So I think that's the, the end. I added some links here um, to give anyone getting started porting an application some references and, and resources uh, on where they can start out. So yeah, with that, we'll take some questions. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, Daniel. Any questions first from the audience? Any question from the panelists? Okay, I have a comment, um, not a really question. I think it's very useful uh, from uh, both of your slides that there are a lot of developing tools for the DESI project and then um, uh, the profiling debugging tools. So I think um, for NISAP projects here at NERSC, uh, it's very important that uh, one NISAP post uh, to uh, helping uh, identify the developing tool for uh, certain science projects and then the um, matched or, or best suitable um, 
profiling tools for that. And that part can be transferable to other NISAP or future NISAP projects. So I feel like this is really valuable. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, Daniel. If you could stay for a little bit of time to answer questions pop up in the Q&A, that would be really good.